Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for joining us for the Marine Field Station virtual tour. Uh, we're going to be beginning with a tour with Steve Everett, our Marine Field Station Manager. He's going to talk about our facilities and what it has to offer in support of our programs. He's also going to be doing a walking tour of the field station live. Um, so bear with us if there's a little interference. It's like quite windy out there today. Um, you're also going to have an opportunity to speak with two of our oceanography students and do a question and answer session, just like we did with Dr. Elizabeth Lacey. Afterwards, uh, we're going to be joined with our admissions director, Allison Henry, who can answer questions about um, general questions or admission questions that you may have. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve Everett. Can you hear me, Steve? All right. Welcome. Um, can, I, can you hear me all right, Adrian? Yes, we can. All righty. Sorry about that. Uh, welcome. I'm glad you all joined us for the virtual tour of Stockton University's Marine Field Station. My name is Steve Everett. I've been running this field facility for Stockton for uh, over 20 years now. Uh, during that time, I've been very fortunate to uh, see the growth of not only the university, but uh, the science programs that this facility, uh, in my position and the, um, the staff that work with me here, the programs that it supports. Um, marine science, most notably, uh, but also other programs, environmental science, biology, geology, uh, more recently sustainability, and then a couple of graduate programs, professional science masters, and new in fall of 2020, coastal, um, coastal zone management. And this, uh, the growth that, that, I've, that I've witnessed is not really, it's not just numbers of students and number of courses that we offer, that is naturally going up, but it's more so the scope of what we do uh, at the Marine Field Station in particular and what we support. In the last 10 years uh, in particular, uh, the faculty that work with us out here that offer the courses that you'll hear about at the other virtual talks, I'm sure many of you were on the Marine Science one and some of the other program live talks and things, events that they will be doing soon. But um, the faculty in each of those programs are very active in uh, externally funded, usually regionally, uh, regionally important research. You heard some of it in the marine science talk, and I'm sure you hear a little bit about it, about it in some of the um, some of the other talks as well. And re research is is it's critical. Um, it's critical that the students get experience in research, that they're able to engage in that, that they're able to. Um, kind of navigate their way through their academic career here and find which parts they like, which parts they don't. Uh, marine science in particular, really all of them, very interdisciplinary fields. It helps to work with each other, whether you're a marine bio, oceanography, um, or other. And the marine field station, and really field stations in general, but certainly our field facility, uh, helps to helps to couple the research and the teaching experiences. And that's one of the things that I, I feel that our program does very well, all of our science programs, that they're able to incorporate the, um, re the faculty are able to incorporate their own research projects into their teaching programs. And that from, you know, from, from my career, I've seen that pay large dividends to students uh, in terms of their marketability for entering the job field uh, or their uh, competitiveness for seeking uh, admission into advanced degrees. So that coupling of research and teaching uh, is kind of at the heart of what we do here at the field station. We enable that to happen. Uh, a few of the reasons why we're able to do that. Uh, one is our location. If you could show that slide, Adrian. Our location, uh, our proximity to campus. Uh, just give us a second there. Our proximity to campus is, is excellent and is rare among field facilities. Uh, we're the yellow dot there on the slide or the yellow arrow. We're only 15 minutes away from our Galloway campus and only 30 minutes away from our Atlantic City campus. Uh, this means that students taking classes or living 
uh, either one of those campuses have the opportunity to, and, and students from afar and commuting as well, of course, um, have the opportunity to engage in uh, what we do here at the field station. Uh, second, or really equal to that, is our regional location. Uh, we are located on the Mullica River Great Bay Estuary. Uh, it is considered to be one of the most pristine estuaries in the Mid-Atlantic, uh, largely because much of our watershed is part of the Pinelands National Reserve, and our marine environment, and even more than that, this area is also a National Estuarine Research Reserve. It is the Jacques Cousteau National Estuarine Research Reserve, federally funded program. Uh, you can Google them to find out more about their programs, but it's just kind of a, a nice testimony to what a perfect area we have literally uh, right out here. Uh, you can see the field station's location relative to the estuary. Thank you. Um, and then uh, the resources. So the field facility is where we have the majority of our resources that support you know, the research and teaching programs that you heard about at the other talks and that, that you'll hear about today and, and, and for the rest of this time here. Uh, whether it's uh, the facilities, we have of course laboratories, which you'll see um, support buildings for building mounts and getting things done for the for the research programs. And then of course the research vessel fleet. I'm sitting aboard the RV Petrel right now, which I'll show you, as well as some of our, our other boats that support support these programs. And then last but certainly not least is the professional staff that work with me here. Uh, we have several staff members. We are all marine scientists of, of varying backgrounds um, with uh, different areas of expertise. And it's, it's our job to support the faculty, uh, you know, to, to uh, run the boats and to teach in the field. We do have a very close relationship with our students, um, mostly through the field and laboratory settings. We're sort of lucky because we don't have to grade any papers or assign any grades but we get to interact with the students. We do play a big role in your education here. We're the ones that show you how to properly deploy nets, how to be safe on a boat, how to tie a knot, how to um, work sonars from, from things as simple as, you know, pulling, in, pulling a net or checking a trap to as advanced as uh, running a multi-beam sonar. The staff here at the field station are the ones that uh, deliver a lot of that. So. Those three things are really key in, in what we're able to offer here. Uh, location, um, resources, and, and the staff that support all of those things. So I'd like to take you on a tour. I'm gonna start with just showing you uh, the petrol here, and then I'll just need a second to get off of this one camera and get onto a uh, walking camera, which hopefully works all right. Plug in the earbuds so you can hear me in the wind. So right now uh, I'm sitting at the helm of the petrol. You can maybe sort of see the field facility in the back. If I scan over this way, I'm not you're uh, basically looking out the back of the petrol. So you're in the wheelhouse of the petrol. It's uh, about maybe 10 by 10. This boat's been designed with both uh, open deck space uh, needed for deploying instruments and taking samples, whether it's oyster dredges, plankton samples, deploying oceanographic equipment, uh, things along those lines, but also with the size of a wheelhouse, it's really almost a small floating classroom. We can fit seven to 10 students in here, um, in addition to the ones that are working right here at the survey station. So we have the helm over there, seating all around here. This is all an enclosed, um, conditioned space. The boat's a 36 foot uh, downy style uh, work boat. I'm going to pan over to the port here. Hopefully, we can see with the glare. All right, and I'm not 100% sure you'll be able to see this, but zoom this down. Bear with me. All right, so this is the port side of the inside of the, of the petrol, and this is our survey station. So this is a dedicated computer. There's dedicated survey grade GPS. These systems are required for a lot of what we do uh, with our oceanography students, um, mostly in the, in the realm of marine survey and hydrography, which I'll talk a little bit more about as I take the tour. Uh, but our students will sit right alongside of staff or faculty right here. 
take turns actually running the instruments, setting up the instruments. Uh, if we're doing water quality sampling, sometimes we'll be taking samples and collecting data and somebody will be putting them right into Excel, right on the computer right here. Not sure that you can see from, from where you are. Uh, this is some color coded, not sure how well you can probably see that, but there's plenty of this on our website. I'll try to show you that later. Uh, but this is color coded bathymetry data taken with a multi beam sonar uh, by our oceanography students. And just a little bit of space down below. Out back again, and then just going to go ahead and take this off. All right, let me swap the camera view. All right, so you're looking out the bow of the petrol. You notice it's got a uh, uh, double anchor system that's for maintaining position for ROV operations or other things like taking bottom grabs. Let's go ahead and spin around here. Looking out the, uh, the back of the boat here, you'll see we have a uh, gantry or an A-frame. Uh, this is for lifting and deploying equipment, whether it's uh, research buoys or a bottom grab that we have there now. Um, Oyster dredges, plankton nets, things like along those lines. Step out. Pretty well. I'll try to give you a little bit of a wide view without stepping off the floating dock here. So, this is looking up the uh, back of the boat. Uh, you'll notice that we do not have a transom or a back to the boat. That's all the to provide more clearance between the deck and the A-frame. It's common on work boats, uh, and it allows us to deploy, uh, to deploy uh, larger, taller equipment. There's mounting systems on both the uh, uh, port and starboard side of the boat. Uh, right now we have one instrument mounted aboard. This is an EdgeTech 6205. It's a multi-beam sonar that is used to um, map the depths of water as well as to image uh, the underwater environment uh, out to sometimes 100 meters to either side of the boat. So that's a uh, excellent tool for our oceanography students. And I'll try to show you a little bit more about that later on. It's rigidly mounted to the boat. Get a little bit different view here and swings overboard uh, when it's time to go ahead and start conducting a survey. So there's a little bit better look at the boat. Uh, you can sort of understand that it's got both the open space <coughs> and the uh, nice wheelhouse area. This is looking out over uh, the Mullet River Great Bay system. The small boats right here are part of our small boat fleet. Uh, we've got two of the 21 foot center consoles. Uh, the closest boat to us, and then <clears throat> the 24-foot boat that uh, is also used to transport students throughout the estuary and an assortment of classes. You hear me right as far as the wind? A little choppy right now, but. All right, well, we'll get back inside here. So we're looking up at the, uh, at the field facility. Uh, Two-story building is the management office upstairs and a wet laboratory and equipment maintenance on the ground floor. Workshop to the uh, to the right there, another boat. <clears throat> this is a shed here down towards the uh, down towards the water and just maintains a lot of the equipment that doesn't require uh, environmental control, so all of the nets and dredges and uh, dive gear and snorkel gear and water sampling devices and all the different things that go, go along with marine science and conducting field work. Take me a second to walk up here. Uh, most students, uh, when they have a course here, the faculty member will have a 15 person band on campus and a, a meeting spot and they will get transported out to the field station that way uh, quite often most of the upper level students 
uh, you generally carpool for, for research or even classes, but there is, uh, uh, there is transportation, of course, offered whenever you have a class out here. And your classes, I should have mentioned earlier, your classes are uh, the lecture material for the majority of your marine science or any of the science classes will take place at one of the main campuses. <laughs> It is the lab section that uh, comes out here to the Marine Field Station. So if you come here, you're gonna go head out there to park. Over here is the uh, Coastal Research Center. They are a grant and contract funded uh, research entity within the university uh, that does a lot of coastal zone monitoring, um, beach, uh, beach replenishment and beach monitoring storm events things along those lines, physical science and coastal zone management. <clears throat> and many Stockton students uh, work there, and I think a good amount of the staff are Stockton graduates. We're on two sides of uh, a public road here, it's Wilson Avenue. And to the right is, let's see, this is uh, building 501. This is our teaching and research laboratory that Dr. Z was presenting in earlier today. Uh, it is literally a log cabin and affectionately referred to as the log cabin. Uh, so that is our main teaching area. Uh, in the back, there is another physical science laboratory where we have um, an area to uh, spread out and uh, work with cores, sediment samples, there's drying ovens in there, there's a couple other support buildings back there, and then there's about an additional four acres on the back of the property that lead out to the marsh. Not sure how well can see that with the glare you really can't it's an image of the Mullica River Great Bay area but this is uh, entered log cabin and we're now I think you were probably with us earlier if you weren't that's Dr. Elizabeth Lacey in the background uh, this is our teaching and research area so we will the faculty will often meet with the students in here uh, prior to a field trip, meaning prior to going out on the boat, uh, and that, as well as often come back here with samples after a field excursion and or just uh, hold an entire laboratory here. The proximity to the campus that I talked about earlier provides nice flexibility if we have uh, weather concerns. We, we generally don't have to cancel our scheduled field trips, we have backups. You know, we'll just work in here, do something in, something in the lab. We have the flexibility to, uh, if we see that bad weather day coming to possibly collect samples. And generally it's rare that we have to actually um, cancel any field trips. Are you muted? Cause that might sound weird. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that was the main space that we were in right there. There's an additional space over here that provides some flexibility either for larger groups or <clears throat> the faculty working with small research groups will sometimes work in this space here while there is a class going on if, if it can you know happen as far as noise levels and conflict but it works out pretty well a computer lab dr z again in the main space and then you'll see Back here on the left, uh, one open door, and there's several of them. There are several individual faculty research spaces where they have uh, some equipment specific to their own field work and able to store th things in a computer station and just uh, a little bit of space in addition to what they have uh, on the main campus. And right back here, there is a... Uh, small kitchenette and lounge where students can take a break either from a class or um, 
or when they're here for research uh, for longer days with the faculty. More spaces and a couple more individual laboratories down there. So that is our log cabin. That is where we do most of our uh, land-based teaching from, although the students will also be in some of the support buildings, uh, depending on what exactly they are working on. All right. Bye, Dr. Z. I'm here to answer any questions if anybody has any. All right. Very good. Thank you. All right. One more uh, space and a few things to talk about in there. The two-story building uh, I mentioned before is an instrument and uh, wet laboratory on the ground floor. Upstairs is uh, pretty much just management space for the staff, <clears throat> but the ground floor, the students do access and conduct work in there. And you can see it's just a, a short walk from the uh, log cabin down to where the boats are. Step back here, you can see the petrol in the background there, hopefully. And entering the instrument laboratory here. All righty, so this space here uh, was at one point uh, more along the lines of fish tanks. In recent years, with an increase in uh, our equipment resources, we've needed some space to handle those. We do still maintain a few fish tanks here. They're broken down at the moment, um, just offline until the uh, sampling season begins again. But that's what these tanks, seawater tanks, are down here. One larger tank here that uh, we generally use for testing instruments these days, although it is a, obviously a seawater tank. This station here is uh, the water quality instrument lab. These instruments, uh, the large blue cylinder looking instrument there is a uh, multi-parameter uh, water quality instrument. Uh, measures things like temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen, pH, chlorophyll, uh, turbidity, uh, basically mostly physical parameters of water, uh, marine or even fresh water for some of those parameters, but they're, they're the parameters that almost any bio, biological and even some of the physical science uh, programs are interested in measuring. So some of these instruments are deployed for a month or more at a time. Others, uh, such as ones like this right here, are uh, used for discrete sampling, meaning you have got to a location, you're collecting some fish, and along with fish data should always go at least basic water quality data. But these instruments are far from basic. They are uh, definitely, uh, you know, modern, up-to-date, tools, same kind of tools that you would see uh, if you got it when you get into the um, um, work field with an environmental consultant or state group or whatever type of group is doing that uh, type of sampling. Or if you leave here and move on to advanced studies at a graduate program here or somewhere else, I'm confident that you will see these same types of instruments. More here. Uh, here is an example, you might not be able to see it real well, but this is an example of, uh, of the type of data that comes from a long-term deployment where you have temperature going up and down over the course of the month and pH fluctuating a little bit and salinity usually fluctuating with the tide. This, this instrument here Step back. Uh, this is a side scan sonar. The uh, yellow instrument uses um, acoustic uh, pulses to uh, image the seafloor. Up on the monitor there, you can see what's your uh, is on the starboard side. There we go. 
So we are looking at side scan data being collected. Off to the side is the seafloor and some pilings and some debris. In the middle is just the water column and to the port side, uh, the seafloor there. So when you come upon a structure or a different type of bottom, the acoustics reflect differently. This is a school of fish. Uh, side scan sonar is common in uh, search and recovery, habitat mapping, um, uh, derelict fishing gear, uh, identification programs. This is, this is the sonar going underneath the Route 9 bridge here. You can see an area of scouring, uh, engineering, coastal engineering, uh, often uses side scan sonar for their operations. That's part of the oceanography program as it, these two instruments here are acoustic Doppler current profilers. They measure water velocity and direction. The larger one on the right is deployed uh, on the sea floor, or the river floor, bay floor, uh, looking up. And that can collect data like the water quality instruments for a month or even two months at a time. The smaller instrument to the left actually uh, looks down from a pole and is used aboard the boat to measure uh, current velocity and direction during tide, uh, tidal transects sometimes as long as 14 hours, which some of our students that we'll talk to soon may make mention to. A little bit more space here. We have a uh, remotely operated vehicle. This is an underwater vehicle that is operated. You can see some of the video, maybe it's showing clear to you, hopefully. Uh, that's black and white video of um, tall togs, fish on a uh, local wreck. A lot of the work that we've done with this vehicle has been on artificial reefs. It's operated with this control handle right here, and it is tethered to the uh, control unit and to the boat with that fiber optic cable. So that's another tool uh, in the realm of marine technology hydrography and oceanography. Here is, uh, might be a little difficult to see, but a research poster is describing some of the work that we've done with that instrument. Steve, we're at um, 345, just to give you a heads up. Perfect, thank you. <clears throat> uh, and that brings me to this slide right here, which hopefully you can see fairly well. Um, hydrography is just something that I wanted to touch a little bit on. Uh, we often refer to it as the art and science of mapping the underwater world. Um, side scan sonar that I just mentioned, ROVs, the multi-beam sonar that I showed down on the petrol, uh, the ADCPs, magnetometers, mobile LIDAR. We have each of one of those. I didn't show you all those, but we have uh, each of those pieces of equipment and they have helped us form a program in the last couple of years uh, to support hydrography. And that falls within the concentration of oceanography. So it's something that I want prospective students to just kind of consider as another area that's not so commonly thought of when you're first looking at marine science as a career option. And with that, I would like to introduce Caitlin Turner, an oceanography student here that has been doing a lot of hyd hydrography work with us. So if we could switch to Caitlin and uh, we'll get back to a few questions in a few minutes. Hi, um, Adrian, I do have a slide that you should have. Uh, you could go ahead and share your screen, Caitlin. You should have the ability if, if you have it up. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't have it up. Uh, it's okay. I can just, I can talk. It's fine. Um, my name is Katie and I'm a senior concentrating in oceanography. And I'm interested in studying the movement and patterns of the ocean and how that affects marine life in our climate. I'm also currently the chapter president of the Marine Technology Society, which Peyton will tell you more about in a bit. Uh, oceanography is really cool because it applies chemistry, geology, meteorology, bio, and other branches of science to study the ocean. It is especially important today 
because of climate change, pollution, and other factors that are affecting the ocean and its marine life. One concern a lot of students have with oceanography is math and physics, and I was in a similar boat and found both of these subjects very intimidating. There is a lot of help between professors, study groups, and the tutoring center. There's so many resources and people willing to help you. I went from being somebody who was frightened by these subjects to TAing in physics and actually minoring in math. So don't let them scare you. You'll, you'll get the confidence and you'll be able to do it. Um, at Stockton, I've been fortunate enough to be involved in an array of research, either in class or through summer programs. Research um, with my advisors and a research team, and also with a bunch of volunteer experiences. In the oceanographic methods class in the summer research I took, my research team, we were able to ask our own questions about the environment and decide what we wanted to study. And so that was really cool because then we got to design our own research project. And this was aided with one of our advisors as well as the field station staff. And one thing you'll definitely notice at Stockton, um, if you guys choose to go here, is that you're gonna get a lot of emails. And these emails are for jobs in the future or for different volunteer research experiences. And I strongly suggest you read those job descriptions because they might give you an idea of different careers that are out there that are really interesting. And also for the volunteer experiences. So Steve will send out an email and just say, hey, I have two spots open to someone available that wants to do this research experience. So that's allowed me to monitor the oyster reefs with a professor I'd never worked with before, and now I have her in class. So that was something I did get to know her before that class. Um, I've also been able to do long surveys that tell us about how the water is moving in and out of the estuary. And this past summer, Steve invited me and a few other students to go out with the, the geological survey and find sand for beach replenishment on the Atlantic Ocean. So that was really cool and the opportunities are really endless. And so Peyton is up next and he'll tell you more about MTS and some research we've been working on. All right, um, hi everybody. Um, is my screen coming up when I'm talking? Uh, no, you have to hit the share screen button on the bottom. Do you see it? All right. Um, hey, everyone. As Katie said, my name is Peyton Benson. Um, I'm a junior majoring in marine science, also concentrating in physical oceanography. Um, and I'm the vice president of the Marine Technology Society here at Stockton. Um, I transferred to Stockton three semesters ago. Um, and when I came in, I thought I wanted to be marine biologist, but then I took a class, uh, intro to oceanography class with Dr. PH. Um, she's in that picture up here on the top left. Um, she's one of the oceanography professors. And since I took that class, I've just been obsessed with it. So I can definitely advocate for taking the oceanography track if you're not necessarily sure, but obviously I have a bit of bias when it comes to that. Um, but since I've been at Stockton, um, I've had... I've been able to take part in some really cool opportunities that I wouldn't be able to participate in at other schools because of the focus on undergrads here. Um, one of those is, Katie briefly mentioned this, um, we work together on a long-term project where we measure secondary circulation and estuarine exchange flow in the Mullica River Great Bay Estuary. So basically what we're looking at is currents other than tides that are causing circulation and change in coastal areas and especially in estuaries. So this picture, these pictures on the left are, um, we're deploying in that top picture, we're out deploying our ADCP in that green mooring uh, to the bottom of the inlet. And then you guys saw it earlier, um, how nice it looked, but this bottom picture uh, shows what it looked like after it spent a month in the water. Uh, so we had to do some serious cleaning on that. But um, the one thing I really wanted to talk to you guys about um, is our Marine Technology Society. So last fall, we were able to, Katie and I, along with Steve and Dr. PH, our advisors, we were able to reestablish um, MTS here at Stockton. Um, and what I think is really cool about MTS is that they focus on allowing students to have um, networking with industry professionals, as well as getting hands-on experience outside of the classroom with different marine technologies that you might not get as much experience with. Um, and also gaining a literacy in programs and data processing software like MATLAB or HiPAC, 
Um, these other pictures on the slide are from an opportunity we were able to provide to students last semester where a company called Echo came in and they were demonstrating um, a slightly different version of a multi-beam sonar device. Um, we have one that's similar, but um, our members were able to participate in the planning of running transects, um, actually running these transects in the field, and then uh, conducting data processing in real time on the boat. So that picture of the boat um, that was generated, we ran a transect over the seafloor and we generated that picture in real time and we got to see that. So that was really cool. Um, so I think it's a really good um, asset for students, um, especially in marine science. No matter which way you go, technology is really relevant, um, especially now. So if you guys have any questions about the oceanography tract, um, the transfer process, getting involved in independent research, or Stockton life in general, please feel free to ask Katie, myself, or any of the other students that are here today. Uh, thanks, guys. Does anybody have any questions for our field station manager, Steve Everett, or um, Dr. Z? How about um, anybody have any general questions or admissions questions that you'd like to ask our admissions representative, Allison Henry? Adrian, I can uh, jump in there just for a second. Can you hear me okay? Sure. Yes, we can hear you. There we go, sorry about that. Uh, not the easiest thing to do from your phone. But uh, just to sort of wrap things up uh, a little bit, obviously you can find out a lot more about what we do at the field station um, by searching Marine Field Station in the uh, search box um, at the Stockton uh, webpage. There you'll see information about our research, some of the resources that I mentioned. Obviously we don't have time to show you everything in this uh, walk about 45 minutes. Another good place is to just look at photos just to get an idea of uh, what we do um, from, you know, from a field standpoint is to visit our Facebook page. There's a link on my web page, but if you just go there, even if you don't want to look back at the post, just go to photos and there's probably hundreds of photos from the last couple of years. Uh, many of them are fairly self-explanatory and they give you a really nice feeling uh, really nice feeling for uh, what our students get to do in the field. So if there aren't any questions. We do have one question, Steve. Beth okay. is asking who she could contact for volunteer opportunities over the summer as a high school graduate. Sure, so uh, any one of you can contact, um, contact me through the field station webpage. Uh, there's multiple areas there where you can contact me. Uh, you can also just email MFS, as in Marine Field Station, mfs at stockton.edu. Uh, so whether or not we have any opportunities, we are well connected with the greater scientific community, marine science community in particular uh, in New Jersey, and I'm sure we can uh, point you in a couple of the right directions. I do get that question with, uh, with some frequency. Z, are you still on the line? Yes, I am. Did you see the question I forwarded to you? Yes, I've been. I've gotten a lot of, of uh, messages, so I'm busy replying. Um, let's see. So yours was doing classes online this semester. How are you doing lab classes? Um, so for this semester, it's definitely a bit unique. Uh, most of our labs are um, loaded into the fall. We have a lot more labs happening in the fall, just because of the weather <laughs> being a lot nicer in the fall. Um, and so our current plan is to um, continue that mode, you know, with, with having in-person labs in the fall. The other courses, so for instance, um, biology labs, chemistry labs, things like that, um, those are all being offered online um, and they've transitioned to that. I don't know, are any of the current students that are on right now, are you in something with a lab right now? Do you want to, Katie, I see you nodding your head. How are you doing with your online lab version? So I'm currently in organic chemistry online now, which was a class I was afraid of, but online it is not bad at all. So what they've decided to do is in organic chemistry, you're really learning techniques and how different measurements are taken. So a lot of those things we would do in person have switched to online videos of watching the lab being performed. And then we're given a data set that a student had a previous year 
and then we work with their data to basically come up with the same report that we would have had. So it does miss that little bit of hands-on that you normally have in the lab, but it's just as effective and I feel like I'm getting the same material out of it. Awesome. So uh, we're handling the online lab classes obviously as, as we can do best. Um, and the faculty are discussing options come the fall if that's what becomes necessary. Um, so it, it, courses will not, not be offered. They will still be offered. <laughs> um, and we'll have an online alternative if that's what needs to happen for the fall. Um, and most often we're supplementing them by, you know, doing these virtual labs and tours, kind of like what Steve is doing with, you know, a tour of the lab, um, giving you that level of experience. I did get a question about maybe needing a boating license or not. Um, and you don't need a boating license. All of our vessels are operated by folks like Steve, people with captain's license and certified. So none of the students operate the boats. Um, if you wanted a boater's license, it's obviously a good skill for you to potentially have in your future career goals, but um, we would not be providing you the opportunity to, to captain our vessels, as I'm sure Steve will attest to. We've got um, our staff with our staff really that are in charge of that. And we talked once, I think, or twice about offering potentially kind of boater skills, I think, right, Steve? Like tying knots and um, navigation, reading charts, things like that. So if that's something that interests you, um, I'm sure, you know, we can find ways for you to get that experience on that, that part. Yeah, that's, uh, if I could jump in there, that's uh, something that we've started to do with the oceanography classes. Um, and we're working towards kind of more formalizing, but in a very, in, a, in an informal way, whenever you step on a boat at Stockton, we're trying to make sure, you know, our students come back, come from, Backgrounds. I mean, I, we've had students come here that are licensed captains and professional mariners for one reason or another. Uh, and then students that have never been on a boat before at all, but are choosing marine science. We make sure that you get, um, you know, the, the appropriate uh, exposure and experience so that when you leave here, you can, you know, whether you're operating a boat or at least being safe on a boat and, uh, that you can do that. So we, we do do a fair amount of that. Students that are more interested or do have a lot of experience with uh, operating boats, grew up in the coastal zone, grew up working on charter boats or something like that, uh, I strongly encourage to, as was mentioned earlier in the marine science talk, combining an existing skill set or another desire, whether it's computers, um, uh, chemistry, or in, in, in my case, actually, and in what I'm talking about now, marine operation skills with your uh, chosen field of marine science can be an a excellent way to call, uh, carve out a niche for the, the, what you end up doing. So in my case in particular, uh, I studied oceanography, but I grew up running boats, and a, a good part of my job and my responsibilities here at Stockton rely on my marine operations experience and my um, Coast Guard license. Um, so if you are that type of um, person, it's just one more thing that you can uh, sort of bring to the table and combine with a marine science uh, or any of the other science programs uh, to possibly carve out a job that fits you well. Any other questions? All right. Well, you know where to find us um, at the, uh, you know, Stockton's website, stockton.edu. There you can search marine science. It's pretty easy these days to find us. So we thank you for joining us.